G'day and welcome to Scrangers Workshop. Well, it's another vice today, but this one is certainly very interesting. And this vice was made by a company called Sivo from Sweden. Now here's a rookie mistake. See the rust on it now? Well, I left it sitting in the electrolysis bath overnight. But I was in a hurry and I connected the leads around the wrong way. So I attracted the rust from the sacrificial steel in the bath. Oops. When I got it, everything was absolutely seized and that lever has snapped off. Should be like the one on the left. Uh, but we'll get into it, tear it down. Well that's a nice surprise, these bolts are nice and free, so I think I'll do the rest of them the easy way. With plenty of penetrating fluid and quite a while just sitting there tap tappity tapping, this shaft came out beautifully. Besides the broken handle, this is the only other damage, my pet peeve. People seem to treat an expensive vice like it's some kind of sacrificial workpiece. How expensive? Well the only other one I could find was in the UK, and that's over 600 Australian pesos. The only difference between that one and mine is the base is slightly different. I was very lucky I managed to pick mine up off eBay Australia for $65. Now it's into the degreaser, and yes, I reuse my degreaser because I'm cheap. Now it's out of the degreaser and into the rust remover. Everything's out, washed and dried, time for an inspection. This is the cam lock that's broken. You see the cam on it there for locking and I have to make a new handle for it but I don't think that'll be too much of a challenge just got to watch the offsets something I've noticed is that all these separate jaw pieces are machined and they're all hardened quality unit The first thing I'll do is run everything over these nylon buffing wheels. I think you've seen plenty of this before in my videos. Um, this is an 80 grit I'm starting with.
here I'm going to get into the cast iron base and weld up these holes, fix that up. And because of my, a lot of my restorations involve repairing cast iron, I'm going to do it a different way today. Normally I just use my MIG welder with standard mild steel wire, but I've changed now. I'm going to go to nickel arc cast iron electrodes and dig out the old stick welder. That hasn't been out of that corner for probably 10 years or more, so it'll be interesting. And the first thing I did was get this old piece of cast iron and just start striking an arc to see what sort of amps I'm going to need. The instructions on the rod say preheating is not necessary, but I don't want to take any chances. It's only a few minutes of getting it warm. I'll just point out that while patching up holes like this with mild steel is fine, the only downside to that is the area can become as hard as glass and impossible to machine. The only way you can do anything with it is to grind it. Now it's over to the mill for some machining. This is my homemade control box. As you can see it's not finished yet, but it's good enough to get me started on the mill. Don't bother answering that, that's my phone. The box with the flashing lights is the VFD and the blank screen will be the TACO when I get that finished. Now not only have I never owned a mill before, I've never used a mill before. So this is the first time I've taken cuts in anger. And for those of you that know a bit about mills, I trammed it in before I started. As a first run, I'm pretty happy with that. That'll be pretty easy to finish off by hand. Here I'm getting into the rest of the base. This tool is commonly called a power file. Very useful for getting into tight areas, doing this sort of stuff. And it just takes that rough surface finish off the cast iron. They're pretty inexpensive. I think I paid $65 for this one. So if you're in England or the US, you'd probably pay about half that for it. And the belts are nice and cheap too. They last quite a while. After the power filing, everything that wasn't polished went into the sandblaster. You can see here, this is just the finish off the power file, but on the other side is the finish after sandblasting. It gives a much better finish for the powder coating. You may also notice that I've opened up the clamping pads on the vise to suit the 16mm bolts that my mill uses. And here it is, all masked up, ready for powder coating. The wall of the base is a way of getting powder coated, and by that I mean on the other side of my workshop. I'll get on and make a new handle. So this is the original shaft that broke, and you can see here where it would have snapped off the original handle base. So what I'm going to do is add another piece to this shaft, and then recess it into the new base that I've made see how that goes. It's, I think it will be better than trying to weld the two together. I have to take into account the offsets. Here you can see how the two 
have to fit up together and that shaft has got to come right to the edge of the base. Here you can see the white dot and that's where I've calculated the centre point for the offset's got to be. The hole I've drilled is 9mm. The original shaft was 10.5mm. So when I added a stub to the 10.5mm shaft, I turned it down to 9mm. This gives me plenty of room for silver solder to sink in and the edge of the shaft lines up with the edge of that hub. I hope that makes sense. Here it is straight after silver soldering and here it is all cleaned up, ready to use. I'm pretty happy with it. Just giving it a quick test fit now. The black line represents where the high part of the cam is. So I can actually see where it's locking. Here I'm just adding a little more pressure as if I've locked it with the handle and now I'm just marking where I actually want the handle to come out of that headpiece. Here I'm just machining up the new handle. This is the new cutter I just bought and it's the first time I've had a chance to use it and I'm really happy with it. The chip breaker is working just fine and the finish I'm getting straight off the cutter doesn't need polishing or buffing it's it's a really nice finish on it very happy with it so the one on the bottom is what I started with and the one on the top is about what I'm aiming for here's the two finished the one on the left is mine the one on the right is the original Pretty happy with the outcome. Just doing the final assembly now. I always just use hydraulic oil in my workshop for nearly everything. It's clean, it's thin, and I find it suitable for everything. Here it is all finished. I'm really pleased with it. It's a top quality vice and I think it will be a joy to use. We'll see. This example is probably a little extreme, but it'll just show you what it can do. It takes very little pressure to grip hold of something quite tight. And I'm impressed with its gripping power. And I can't really see a reason why you're going to need to lock the jaws in one position, but the option's there if you need it. And here it is with the other vice I did up for my milling machine recently. And I think between the pair of them, I should be able to hold just about anything. I couldn't do much with the badge though, so I'll just have to leave it as it is. So that's it. Cheers and thanks for watching.